to form these branches, you'll notice that I'm cleaning off all of the stuff that's hanging on the bottom side. This is cleaning as a technique is the most undiscussed aspect of bonsai, yet it's the most important to execute a beautiful aesthetic. Because if you can't clean, you can wire it better than anybody else in the world. If you can't clean, that tree will not look good. Right? So it's that tandem duality of wiring and cleaning at the same time to not just define the foliage, not the positive space, but also to define the negative space between the foliage. And that's where you start to see these, these masses be defined and, and unique in their space that they're occupying. And also we start to see that those, the bottom of the branches gives us definition, whereas the top of the branches has a lot more informality and organic natural feel to it. And again, I want to come back to talking about the fact that the Hokkaido juniper, it's a longer needle juniper. I mean, you can see this isn't, this isn't ideal, but if it's handled correctly, if you have the technique to handle it, it can be just as beautiful as any other juniper. And this is really where we start to tap into that idea that technique allows us to take advantage of every single species that we work with if we know the techniques and nuances to manage it. So when we look at a Sabina, when we look at a Phoenician juniper, when you look at all of the European species that right now are being prominently grafted over with Itoyagawa because of the ease of use, there's a way to make this in the exhibition that's just knockout, drop dead gorgeous because it was handled with such high level of technique, right? So when we talk about design and artistry and we get into this romantic idea about making bonsai, all of that's beautiful, but you have to have the fundamental understanding of the technique combined with the characteristics of the tree to maximize the potential of that tree. As you're, as you're sort of watching, pay attention to the hands because the hands are gonna be showing you actually what you should be doing. How many other people are wondering, like, yeah. okay, that, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> like, okay, it's cool that you can flip it upside down, but how about after you leave Belgium, then what happens? <laughs> okay, so basically, when you guys think about repotting, right, and you come back to this tree, we have to, in repotting, approach repotting with the same strategy as we approach everything else in bonsai. That is, we have to have an idea of what are we trying to accomplish when we enter the repot. Now, in all actuality, this tree's native root system exists on the bottom side of the trunk that was originally flipped to the top. So this tree's already been through one major sort of flip-flop of shape. What that means when you see all of those roots sort of exposed at the base and you don't see the true base of the tree is that all of those run into this container and all the fine roots move into the soil. When we take this tree out of the container to be able to accomplish this angle, we're obviously going to start on this upper corner and we're going to start teasing out those roots. Now, I only have to get to the halfway point of breaking that root mass down before I actually touch the true root base of the tree and find the trunk of the tree. So in reality, it's a very minimal repot. It's just we have to go about it very intelligently to be able to do so without fully bare rooting the tree. And it really means starting from this upper corner, starting to break down that upper corner, free those roots up. Once we get down to this midway point, nice clean line in the root system, 50% of the roots are gonna be teased out, we fold those over the top of the tree at the natural root base, and there you have your free roots, your established root ball, and the repositioning of the tree. It's actually very, very easy if we understand what we're trying to accomplish. It's a very, very um, low impact repot on this tree to reverse what was done a long time ago. Yeah, great question. Anybody else? What about the timing of doing that after you've done all this sure. on the top? Sure. What about the timing of doing it after you've done all that on the top? So this is a massive question, too, because now it's like, well, how does this tree sit like this if you're not going to do it this year, right? Mm -hmm. 
Obviously, if this tree is going to be successful and we don't want to fully dismantle the roots, we would have to take it out of this pot, basically set it inside of a training pot at this angle, and keep that, that upper portion of the root system water. But here's the thing. In this working of this tree, when we talk about junipers and the repotting process, juniper strength comes from the foliage. Right? I've, I've preached that a lot. There's a lot of Mariah Lab members here. You guys are like, yeah, we get it. I've heard it. Okay? And what that means is if we're not totally denuding this tree of foyer mass and we're not totally reducing the foyer mass to a significant degree, which the, the scope of this work has not been to prune off all the branches, turn half of it into deadwood and to start over with the tree. Quite the opposite. We're making use of almost every piece of foliage on this tree, except for you know a few spare branches. What that means is we can fully come back and repot this this year if we want to handle the roots. And I, in fact, in order to be able to actualize the design, this is something we would have to do. Now, this is a big difference when we talk about restyling an established tree versus styling a raw tree for the first time. Raw tree for the first time, not advisable to style it and then go repot it because of the severity of work that you guys are seeing happen over here. But because we're keeping so much of it and it has so much built up and it has an established root mass and we're not going to be really pushing the roots too hard, totally realistic to do that this year. And, and any time that you come into a demonstration, a demonstrator always has to keep in mind what is the likelihood that somebody can take this tree and handle it afterwards to make sure that it survives. If that's not a consideration, that's not a sustainable demonstration, that's not practical bonsai practice. Okay? Yes? Can you speak slowly because it's very difficult for me to understand Ah, yeah, I'll speak, I'll speak more slowly, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I get, I, I get like taken over by the spirit of bonsai and then, and then it just rolls on after that. Yes? What would be your uh, future, let's say, harmonized uh, picture of the bonsai combination with that pot? Yeah, the contain. So, so when I started this demo, I was thinking last night as I was going to sleep. I was like, how cool would it be? Because I knew repotting was going to be a stumbling block of this. How cool would it be if we could actually t take it through the whole process and put it into a beautiful container from the vendor area? Uh, I, I haven't proposed that to, to the trophy uh, people yet, but maybe that might be something to think about because uh, it would be quite easy for me to do the repot and to show it in its finality would be, uh, I, I think, significant to see that transformation and transition. Um, but I think a tree like this, now we're pulling on this very sinuous line. This isn't a powerful tree. This is an elegant tree, this is a slender tree, this has this nuance of the living and the dead interacting. And in my mind, that needs more of an elegant container. Now when we talk about elegance in container, we have slanted walls, we might have a more delicate foot with a limited amount of contact to the surface, we'll have a rim on it for sure. We might have some sort of ornate characteristics and qualities in the container, uh, an inset corner, or uh, some sort of band at the rim of the container. But I do see this existing in a round shape. I think a round would be beautiful. I think if you went to a square, I think a square would have to have rounded corners or inset corners. But I definitely see elegance uh, of foot that's elevated. Yes. But would that pot then be uh, left to the bonsai? Or? For sure, left. For sure. And whenever you start to talk about using a round container, this is not something that most people will discuss, but the aesthetic that makes a round container very beautiful is when the apex breaks the lateral boundary of the container. And so for this tree, as long as the apex stays outside of that lateral boundary, a round container would be real nice. Yeah. Any other questions out there? Yes, sir. How will you water the tree? How will we, how will we water the tree? Through the drainage hole? Yeah. For Australia. <laughs> if it stays like this, it would be a problem, right? But um, anytime you do a, a recycling like this, there's also a system that you have to put in place to be able to sustain the tree, right? So we would actually have to upright the tree to water it. And then if you're going to leave it like this for another year, you'd have to change the angle again. So maybe it does make sense to do a repot. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Kind of, kind of crazy. Do you guys think that this will actually work to repot the tree? Is anybody out there like, this is total crap? Because I like it when you guys think that. And then it's so fun when you change it and it works. <laughs> yeah, following. Um, I'm trying to figure out, yeah, the dead branch you have going down towards your yellow ribbon. Right, right, right. I'm right. trying to figure out where that's going with the repot. Yeah, this right here, right? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, if we could keep that as a feature that existed in the repot, that would be amazing. Right now, in its current position, it's not going to be possible. So anytime that I have a feature like this, 
there is some flex to that feature, right? And if we could use the rim of the pot to flex that away from the root mass and have it hang over the front of the pot, now we're talking about something that creates a lot of visual impact. Is it gonna be possible? The chances are low that that will be a piece that actually exists in the final repotted tree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good? All right, we're gonna keep rocking. This is a nuanced design here, for sure a nuanced design. Now, it's dramatic to see the transition because it was a cascade that had such a long design. Like, that, that was way out there. And all of a sudden, when we tilt it up like this and we start to say this is an elegant tree, well, what does the shape of an elegant tree look like? It starts to become a little bit more, mm, a little bit more cerebral, less defined. But an elegant tree, when we think about elegance, we're gonna be drawing the height of this tree up. Now, most of us, most of us in bonsai are sort of resigned to the idea that we need to compress the design. That was a d -d design, right? Compress the design. But that doesn't necessarily work with an elegant tree. When we talk elegance, we want to extend the line here. Particularly when we see the kind of beauty in the movement in the upper portion of this tree, and we see the kind of beauty in the lines on this cascading branch. So when we start to elongate the tree, we also have to narrow the silhouette. So the front of the tree, as I see it, is actually right where I'm looking here. Now, we have a little bit of an issue because obviously all this weight is sitting over a three-legged stand. And if we don't have it sitting over this leg, it'll fall over. We also have a bag of Akadana to counter that weight. But when we start to look here, you recognize that this point actually does create that longest point and that asymmetry and flow in the design. We'll rotate it and mark the front so that everybody knows what's happening. But what that means in the objective up in here is that we have to pull all of this back and start to really narrow that silhouette. And our apex has to be kept a little bit higher, a little bit smaller, so that we proportionally pull that whole elegance of the design together. But definitely, this is very close to the base, and that means that everything else has to follow suit. Again, this is defining and really dictating the way that the rest of the tree is approached.
like it's just not confusing. It's crazy. <笑>途中までだいたい針金の静止が頭の前まで終わりました、えー、とこれから頭の場所を決めるんですけれども流れっていうのは頭と差し枝の長さの関係で決まりますアーチェリーを弓矢,弓矢をあの思い出してもらうと分かるんですけど弓矢をちょっとこのぐらい引いた時とこのぐらいの引いた時っていうのはあの皆さんこの弓矢離してなくてもこれだけど,どのぐらい強くただけで感じますよね。それと同じ関係でこの頭が多分ここにあった場合この差し枝はもっと気が流れるように感じるんです。<笑>頭をここに持っていけばこの距離が長くなれば長くなるほど流れっていうのはすごく感じる、so、でこの木に対してでもここに頭があったらおかしいですよね。それはやっぱりこの木の場所、幹の場所と、あとはこの流れによって、その適切な場所っていうのがいくつか考えることです。でこれから頭を作りますけど一つの候補はこの辺ですねでもう一つの候補はこのそれぞれのストーリーを考えたときにこれは生きていたんですねこの木はもともと生きていたのが分かるようなシャリなんです枝があるときにこの辺を見ていただくと分かるんですけれどもこの枝は後ろから持ってきています
でこの元のこの元のところには枝がないんです根が根がないこのこのここにここに芽は生えてないんです生えてないこの枝元に生えてるんですそれは上の葉っぱがあるので当然日陰になるから芽が飛ぶんですよ。それなので実はこの辺にあの懐の懐っていうか懐芽を。作ると、実はその木は古くは見えないっていう人のその意識が。そうそう、懐に懐っていうのはこの枝の元です。場所じゃない。If uh, if a if a lot of new but formation at the beginning of the branches that、uh, Make the, the tree、uh, younger, not older. If you look at an、uh, uh, old tree, you can see that there are no、uh, bud formation here. So, I'm going to talk about the tree. If you look at the tree, you can see that there are no bud formation here. So, I'm going to talk about the tree. If you look at the tree, you can see that there are no bud f o r m それを考えてここに出るまでここは人間だったそれが If you imagine if there was a, a big branch here Did it、uh, grow a branches here? For example If there was a big branch here Here、uh, There is no sunshine in here ここに頭を作りたいんですけれども、そういうことから考えて、ちょっと今回はずらします。そしてまたこの木がもっとあの最近枯れたものではなくてもっと歴史が古くなってあの木が完全に枯れてきた時にはもしかしたらここに枝があるかもしれません。ただ、今回のその姿の一つの提案として、うん、とこの辺を頭に持っていくような作業をします。Um, あのここをねこれが腐ってますけどこれは本当の自然の,あの1位の姿なんですね。でここは腐っても多分ここは腐らないここは腐らないですからあの中だけだともっと古さも出ていいっていうことを考えてであのもし腐るのが嫌な場合はあの石灰用ご材をこまめに塗るとかあとはあのそれを固めるもう少しこのままにしてもうちょっと腐らせて
So one of the things that, <clears throat> one of the sort of boundaries that's very hard to cross when we start to look at the approaches of bonsai, the Japanese approach, the European approach, the American approach, are these sort of unspoken, unquantifiable cultural aspects. Right? And what Mr. Fujikawa-san is talking about over here is like really, really hardcore, detailed, in-depth concepts about how to maximize taxes as a bonsai versus other species. So he's really talking about tapping into the hollow nature of it. He's talking about the hardness of the wood. He's talking about the fact that the core rots before the outside rots. He's talking about his branches mimicking the age of the hollow trunk by not having the interior growth and instead showing the lines of the branches. These kinds of nuances are the product of a bonsai culture that has been refined over hundreds of years of really intense pursuit of perfection. And so the nuances that are oftentimes missed when we're watching a really talented Japanese demonstrator are these really fine nuances of a very deep level of bonsai that when we're looking at it, we're like, cool, looks like a bonsai tree. But he's thinking at that level in a culture that's been refined for so long that those fine nuances, it's like um, being able to taste the notes of wine or understand what terroir is, right? You have to taste a lot of wine to be able to taste the terroir in wine. And it's the same thing that he's kind of working with. So when you guys listen to what he's saying, it's very different than what each of the the other people up here say it's different than what I'm saying. It has a lot of value to it, but understand that this is like that far end of bonsai knowledge in the Japanese bonsai approach that he's sharing with you. It's extremely, extremely valuable information that he's sharing. Okay. Thank you. 
know, just working on the structural parts of the apical region. And again, I just kind of want to focus you guys, the rim of the container is just sitting right above the, the living vein, so kind of like right there is the front of the tree as you guys look at it. Now you can see this being the far point that protrudes on the bottom. You can see there's a little bit of length here that we're going to kind of start to maximize by pulling this back in. But now we've got to start to talk about that concept of the apex. How does the apex exist inside of this design? Because this design, the trunk is moving to the right. The defining branch or that asymmetrical branch is moving to the right. We have a, another insinuation of length. So this canopy comes out. It moves back in. It goes back out. There's a lot of movement in it, but it is very, very narrow and very, very tight. Exactly like we said we were going to execute. Everything has happened as per what we expected. Now in the apex, the question is, does the apex continue to move that way? Or do we pull the apex back and try to bring some of that visual mass back on the tree to one, balance it, but also two, to have the apex work against the defining branch. Now, when we ask this question, you have to understand that 95% of the time in bonsai design, the apex moves in the same direction as the defining branch. This is almost standard. Now, when we take the apex away from the defining branch, we cause a lot of conflict in the design, right? And conflict isn't necessarily bad. Conflict can be quite interesting. Then you have to ask yourself, does the material have the ability to, number one, handle that distribution of the weight by pulling the apex back? This tree moving so far to the right definitively has the ability to handle the distribution of the weight coming back to the left. Number two, does the tree have enough interest in its features to be able to handle that kind of conflict in the design of its asymmetrical defining branch and apex? And I would say the rotation, the movement, the twist, this tree definitely has the kind of interest to be able to handle that conflict. So I think just to put a little bit of a cherry on top of the whipped cream that sits on the ice cream above the bananas and chocolate, we bring the apex back to the left and really make something spicy for today. What do you guys think? All right, All right. All right cool. is indicated. Here is the front. And now we will continue step by step. Sorry? It's a very precise work. Being a few millimeters wrong isn't good at all. It has to be in the right position. Depends on the final results. At this moment, he actually doesn't know if he will need a yin over there. Maybe it's too much, and then he will remove it. He don't. He says that this tree don't need, doesn't need much uh, that would uh, yins over there. There is a very nice part here. When the demo will be finished, you can uh, see the details and. Here on the base, the nibari, and inside this is important, and that is in the back. You can't even see it.
ができればあの僕としてはその防災の一つの答えでもあるんです形の防災が出来上がりますし、今の形で今のこの形でいう僕のその一位の答えというのはこの形なんですけれども、また時が経つにつれて形とか申し込みとかでこの形が変わっていくのもまた一つの楽しみですから、あのまこれが今の答えだ
man, this is a monster. Now, there's, there's some deception in the final design of this because you've got all of this space, and you have to be able to conceptualize this space from that point in the live vein across this whole pot as negative space. That's tough to really do. Because what it looks like now is it looks like you have an upright tree and a cascading tree, but this isn't the rim of the pot, right? The rim of the pot is actually down here below this branch. Okay? So if you can imagine that, right? The eventual height will be somewhere kind of right in here. And then the pot will be from here down. And so if you start to think about that, you're gonna have this super elegant line with this dramatic dropping branch one of the biggest parts of this whole design was to reduce the width of the silhouette. This thing was this big, long, cascading tree, and now all of a sudden it's this elongated, super slender form. But notice how the foliage is existing in all of the parts, behind the parts where we want to show, around the parts where we want to show, above the parts that we want to show. We use the foliage to guide your eye through the design, showing the interesting movement where we lack some of that. There's spaces where we want to see that really created that smaller apex, but all in all, that total crux of the design, asymmetry moving this way, apex <coughs> coming back this way, and creating a, just a little bit of spice, right? A little bit of sauce to the design. So if, um, if the bonsai gods work with us and we get to repot this before I go, that would be the best case scenario, because I would love for you guys to see that. But uh, I want to thank Troy and Todd, my two helpers.